More expensive mist. Yes, God. <gasps> I love a good facial. Oh my God, Natalie. I am so ashamed of you. Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. As you may or may not notice, I'm in a different location. Yeah, bitch, I moved. Just temporarily, but I actually kind of like replicated my entire setup here. I moved and I'm still figuring out my setup. It looks a little different, you know, I'm figuring it out. And yes, if you're wondering, I'm still kneeling. Some things just never change. <laughs> I mean, some things should change, they just don't. But let me tell you guys real quick before we get to the video. I filmed an entire video and I didn't sweat. This is the first time I've ever lived in a place with AC. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm not used to filming an entire video and not needing to shower right after. Like, that's insane. Is that TMI? That's TMI. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this video and it's not just because of the cold brew at 11 p.m. No, it runs deeper than that. I'm going to be reacting to my favorite YouTuber skincare routine, Contra Points. Yes, she is my favorite YouTuber. I'm sorry, Simply Neological. I'm sorry, Trixie and Katya. If you aren't familiar with Contra Points, she's a YouTuber named Natalie and she focuses on philosophy, societal and personal reflection and understanding, fascism, capitalism, modernity, you name it. And she shares her very unique perspective in life experiences as a trans woman. The pure edification that I walk away from her video with, I'm not kidding you guys, go watch one of her videos, your minds will be blown. It makes me feel like fucking Aristotle, bitch. And beyond the education that her videos do offer, first of all, she's super funny. Like I find myself cracking up through the entirety of her videos, even though she covers pretty complex and serious topics, but that doesn't even describe the pure art that is her videos. She spends a month to two months on every single video. They are practically cinematography masterpieces. And she recently hit a million subscribers. Congratulations, Natalie. But I will just say the fact I have more subscribers than her is evidence that life is horrifically unfair because she deserves so much more than me. Mr. Pump out five videos a week. <laughs> I could learn a thing or two about her month long process of making a video. And if ContraPoints had a commission for sharing her channel, bitch, I would be topping the charts. I have shared her with everyone close in my life and I'm like, you guys, you need to watch her. She's amazing. Anyway, let me stop fangirling. I was recently watching one of her videos for the fourth time because you just need to watch her videos a bunch to fully dissect the messages. And I was driving and listening to, what is it called? Beauty. I was watching her video called beauty and right in the middle of it I hear her go into a skincare routine as I'm driving and I was like what how have I not heard this before in the previous three times that I've watched this video I was so shook I didn't know how I missed that but I was like you know what let me just react to it. I'm interested to see what her knowledge of skincare is, but I will say, I know that she does know a little bit about skincare because she follows me. And let me tell you, girl, when she followed me, the inside of my brain was like, God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, stay everyone? Calm. Stay calm. I was freaking out. So I assume she's a little bit knowledgeable, but we will see. I have no idea. And I'm so excited to see what Natalie's skincare routine is. So let's get into it. If you don't know me, I am a specialist, but I'm not a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist, and I never claim to be. That is not my place. That's not who I am. I am not licensed. These videos are just for fun and information sake and hopefully spread a little bit of basic skincare knowledge out there and also show you guys what my personal skincare philosophies and opinions are. If you're having any concerns with your skin or serious skin issues, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. If that's not my place. That's where they can help. So her video beauty is 30 minutes long. Obviously, we're not going to watch the entire thing. And this video is more so kind of talking about the reasoning behind our beauty standards, why they exist. And the funny thing is that throughout this video, she's kind of mocking influencer culture in a way. Well, I wouldn't say it's mocking. It's more satire. It's illustrating essentially the hyper-consumerism and culture that surrounds the beauty influencer space and how it kind of further perpetuates the cycle of beauty standards. I'm not gonna get into it. You can watch that if you want. But in this part, she's pretending to be an influencer as she shares her own skincare routine. As if it wasn't bad enough to have to go through a second adolescence on camera, <laughs> I also have to deal with aging and thus the ritual of skincare <laughs> products. Way. Here's my daytime routine. So first I'm gonna mix the Dermalogica exfoliator with the cleansing gel and oh, just okay. massage my face. None of this is sponsored, by the way. This is just me supporting corporations out of the kindness of my heart. <laughs> what a self-drag, and she took me right with her. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, free publicity for big brands. Anyway, so she goes in with the Dermalogica Microfoliant, which I believe I've talked about both that one and the cleansing gel on my Truth About Dermalogica video. I'm gonna look up the ingredient list again because I don't remember exactly if I was a fan of them or not. Okay, so the Daily Microfoliant is $60. Yeah, I mean, that's... 
that's pretty pricey. I mean, it's essentially the same price as like Tatcha and other brands kind of in that price point. Dermalogica is not cheap. This one is a powder exfoliant, which is actually personally my favorite type of physical exfoliant because you don't risk like, like with walnut shells or coffee scrubs, really damaging the skin through over exfoliation. That being said, the ingredient list does not look too bad. I mean, there's rice bran, rice starch, allantoin, salicylic acid, licorice root extract, you know, good ingredients. It does have one citrus essential oil, but it's a wash off treatment, so it's not too problematic. I will say though, in terms of comparison to the Tatcha powder exfoliant or the BioWish Trend powder exfoliant, I would personally choose those ones over this one just because I find the ingredient list of those ones are better. But this one's definitely not bad. I mean, I don't mind it at all. And then for the cleansing gel, which yes, is, is also pretty expensive too. Oh yes, okay, I remember. This is why I don't like it. <laughs> Lavender oil is literally the fifth ingredient. That's insane. Lemon oil and bergamot oil are after it. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember this again. Dermalogica comes off as a very very like medical dermatologist type brand, but the amount of essential oils that they use and at the concentration that they use just absolutely blows my mind. I never see brands use that many essential oils and you can tell like when I smelled their products before, I'm just like, wow, the fragrance is strong for this one. Which honestly is really a shame. If you guys do know of any Dermalogica products that are fragrance free, let me know because the team is actually very nice. After they saw my review video, they've actually reached out multiple times, super respectful, super kind. So it's really cool to see a brand that's so receptive to feedback, but I just, yeah, most of their products I'm not a fan of for that reason. I'd say if she was, to keep one, keep the powder exfoliant, but switch out the cleansing gel for a different cleansing gel with a little bit less fragrance. Like I love the use of the people one. If you have combination to oily skin or if you have more dry skin, the Holly Frog Superior Gel Wash is really great because it's non-stripping and hydrates the skin while still being in gel cleanser consistency. Either of those would work. Oh, also all the products that I'm talking about in today's video are linked in the description box below. If you do want to support me on my channel, feel free to use them, but no pressure whatsoever. They're just there. You guys know the drill. If you want to use them, you're welcome to. Now, if I'm not running late for something, I will do a face mask ask, but okay. if I'm out of bed, it's because I'm running late for something, so. <laughs> Mood. I, I've never done a face mask. Now I'm, gonna use a <laughs> now I'm gonna use a toner, which is very important. Uh, now, a lot of people don't know what a toner okay, does, I recognize but that one. Um, <laughs> look, it tones okay. <laughs> Do you want your face to be untoned? <laughs> Next I'm gonna spray. Ex <laughs> oh girl, that's a, that's a. That's a dark road. So I'm familiar with that toner, the, the shape of it. It is the Origin Zero Oil Toner. If you aren't familiar with my journey with Origins and Zero Oil on my channel, I used to claim that the Zero Oil Moisturizer by Origins was the best moisturizer I had ever used. It was my obsession. I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. Until I was called out by one of you lovely people saying that it's probably not the best moisturizer and that I needed to educate myself. And thus began a beautiful journey of education. And I'm friends with the person who commented that to this day, I literally saw her when I was in California. But that is the Zero Oil Toner, which is very similar to the moisturizer. The amount of essential oils that Origins uses just makes my blood curdle. It freaks me out. Like the essential oils would be at the tip, tip, tip top of the ingredient list. And so many essential oils to the point that I'm just like, okay, are we putting fragrance on our skin or are we putting skincare on our skin? Which is a shame because the goals of Origins are actually really good. They're really revolutionizing the industry for like sustainability standards and recyclability units and all this stuff. But there's so many amazing brands out there that I want to support, but they formulate with so many essential oils or fragrance that I just don't feel comfortable using them. So yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts on it. And for that reason, I just don't recommend that toner. Also, so I do hold the unpopular opinion that toner is not necessary to a skincare routine. Toners were originally invented to offset the stripping effects that cleansers would have because the old ingredients that were used in cleansers were really harsh on the face and would totally throw off the pH of the skin. So the toner was meant to reset the pH back to a normal level so your skin was hydrated. Nowadays, with all the cleansing agents that are used, very rarely will you throw off the pH of your skin that much, which essentially renders toners useless, but don't let companies hear that. They love to tell you that you still need a toner. But for me, unless the toner has like active ingredients ingredients like exfoliants and you use it you know a few times a week and it is your treatment part of the skincare routine it's really not necessary to a routine it doesn't mean it's bad unless it's that one <laughs> i'm kidding but no i would just not recommend that especially if it's going to risk that much irritation next i'm going to spray expensive korean yeast directly into my eyes <laughs> i use this because it's actually a lot cheaper than the japanese yeast so you're really losing money <laughs> True, if you don't yes. buy it Think of the savings. Her subtle commentary on consumerism culture is a shade. Now, fun fact, she's an ex-philosopher. She was studying to become a philosopher. And I think she was doing a TED talk and she said, I enjoyed studying philosophy until I came to the realization that life truly isn't worth living. <laughs> And that shit like rung true, although every time I say it around my friends, they think I'm depressed. But hey, I'm grateful she's an ex-philosopher because otherwise she wouldn't have come to YouTube. Anyway, I don't know the exact product that she uses. I 
don't recognize it, but I will say she's going in with a Korean essence instead of a Japanese essence, like she said. She's probably comparing SK2, the very expensive luxury Japanese essence, to a lot of Korean essences, which are way more affordable, have just as incredible ingredients, if not more incredible, because I truly believe that Korean skincare is on the cutting edge of technology than finding new ingredients. But I will say, if you're someone out there who thinks that SK2 is the magic essence, please buy a Korean essence because literally they will do the same thing at an infinitely lower price price point. Like I'm not a huge essence person because again I don't believe it's necessary to a skincare routine but they can be a lot of fun and have incredible ingredients like the I'm From Essence or the Isn't Tree Green Tea Essence. Both of those are so good. Oh also just while we're on it if you're wanting to know the difference between toner and an essence there's really not a huge difference. I would say the eastern definition is very similar but in the west when I think of toner I think of like an alcohol heavy toning solution or something just focused on hydration while an essence is more about like high quality extracts at extremely high concentrations. And typically I consider an essence to have like one or two primary ingredients in the formula and that's it, like 90% green tea or whatever. And toners tend to be way more diluted with water and other ingredients. But truly you'll get a different answer from everyone because toner and essences are very, you know, they're very similar. Now I'm gonna mix a pump of hyaluronic acid with a couple spritzes of organic Bulgarian rose oh. water. You can almost smell the Bulgarian rose fields. It's enchanting. It's oh like, gosh. Not a no, that's not a good sign. So she really discreetly hides the hyaluronic acid serum, which sucks. Come on, girl. Do better next time. But first of all, her strategy is interesting, mixing water with hyaluronic acid. I mean, typically with your actives, you don't really want to mix them because mixing actives like other products together can dilute the effectiveness and cause sensitivity. I don't know how I feel about mixing them together because hyaluronic acid does work to kind of like pull moisture from the air into your skin. So applying a mist on afterwards, after it's already sunk into the skin, I, I would see the benefit in that. I mean, it's kind of hard to mix a water with a serum, right? I'm impressed she can do that. But for the rose water, she uses the Altea Organic Rose Water. And I have seen this before, but I don't know the ingredients. So let's see. Sometimes rose water is hit or miss because I think rose water on its own is fine. It's when they add a bunch of like essential oils and fragrant components to it where it gets a little, a little iffy. Oh, okay, it just says it has rose water. Okay, yeah, I think it's fine. Rose water can be really hydrating and soothing for the skin. So I don't have a problem with it. If she enjoys it, all good with me. I use this moisturizer because Gigi Gorgeous told oh, me to and okay. I do everything Gigi says. Every thing. <laughs> I know it seems like a lot of products. Do you guys know that Gigi Gorgeous was one of the very first YouTubers I ever started watching? True story. And I watched her forever. So she's using the Kiehl's facial cream. I've talked about that in my Kiehl's review video. It was actually one of the Kiehl's products that I did find to be the better of their products. It does what a moisturizer is supposed to do. However, I do have to say, I think it's way too expensive for what you're getting. The ingredients are very lackluster and similar to what you would find for a drugstore moisturizer. And overall, it's just okay. I think it's very interesting that she's going in with, you know, rose water and essence and toner and all these steps. But when it comes to like the actual like staples of the skincare routine or what I would consider to be the staples, they're pretty simple, which, you know, nothing bad with simple. I'm a big fan of simple, but I was hoping she'd go in with something a little bit more, you know, interesting with some super cool ingredients for the moisturizer. I know it seems like a lot of products, but once you get locked into a serious skincare collection, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. And I feel like I'm- <laughs> Oh my god, why is she attacking me so hard? It needed to happen. Admitting you have a problem is the first step of recovery. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, sunscreen. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> yeah, sure what safe. this does. We can probably skip it. And I'm just gonna <laughs> finish it all off with some more oh expensive my god. mist. I cannot. Yes, God. I love a good facial. <laughs> See, this is the problem with Natalie. I can't figure out how much of this is satire or not. But I mean, it's brilliant. This is how I know she knows her shit about skincare. Sunscreen, like I say, is the most important part of the skincare routine. But typically when you're first introduced to the world of skincare, you don't realize that. Or at least I didn't. Maybe that's changing now. I hope it is. I mean, God, I'm shoving it down your guys' throats. And honestly, it's very common for people to have five, six steps in their skincare routine and skip over the sunscreen or just not use the sunscreen at all because they're just like, what is that necessary to a skincare routine? And the fact that she said like, mm, I don't really know what this is for. We can skip it shows me that she knows exactly how important it is, exactly what it does, and that it's precisely the step you do not skip. Now I'm starting to question if this routine was even real. And the irony of her skipping over a sunscreen to use a facial mist instead, I just, I can't. That is hilarious. Because it is so true. People do that all the time. God, it's like pulling teeth trying to get people to put on sunscreen. And I'm not even a dermatologist. I can't imagine how stressed they are. But looking at her shelf closely, I believe she uses the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Water Gel Sunscreen Lotion, the very popular one. Now, right away, I will say this is a Chemical USA sunscreen. And I personally stay away from chemical UV filters within the USA because I find that they can be sensitizing to the skin. They're not as effective as, say, Korean UV filters and for the possible risk associated with coral bleaching. Not to mention that the third ingredient is denatured alcohol. 
Not a fan of that. I mean, not only does it make my skin super, super red, I don't like seeing it at the top of an ingredient list, but it's not the worst thing in the world because actually denatured alcohol can be beneficial for UV filters being delivered into the skin so that they can be effective. So out of all the products that could have alcohol, I'm a little bit more forgiving with sunscreen, but still it's not something I'd use. Not to mention this one has fragrance as well. I mean, this is a sunscreen that's very popular for the feel, the experience, not so much the ingredient list. And honestly, I would just recommend going with the Dear Claire Soft UV Area Essence if you want a very similar experience, but still a high level of protection with the way better UV filters that Korea uses, which by the way is available in my Wish Trend collection. If you didn't know about that, I have a little kit with Wish Trend where you can get Korean skincare products for 40% off. Go to the link below. That sunscreen is actually featured along with some of my other favorite products. But yeah, there's just better options out there. And I'm curious to see what mist she uses at the end. More expensive mist. Yes, God. <gasps> I love a good facial. I'm oh my God, Natalie. I am so ashamed of you. Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray. And not just the small bottle, the big one. I feel like there's not a description necessary for that product. It's fragrance and water. <laughs> That's basically it. Okay, now I'm really wondering if this is all just satire. No, it has to be real. I mean, she went out and bought all these products and even the Mario Badescu spray looked half used. So moment of silence for Natalie's skin. Okay, that's long enough. I'm so fucking wet right now. <laughs> so after all these products, does my skin look clearer, younger, more toned? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but it certainly is moist. <laughs> this is the part where I usually just stare at my own face for 10 minutes and contemplate the futility of my struggle against the ravages of time. I feel that. <laughs> oh my God, lost circulation in my legs. Wow, well, um, as much as I love you, Natalie, I am very disappointed in your skincare routine. <laughs> I mean, I have to be honest, I thought it was terrible. <laughs> I think the only products I was okay with was the Kiehl's facial cream and the microfoliant. That's about it. I mean, obviously, you know why. I explained all the reasoning why, and I will give you a pass for the incredible content you create. And I hope you've learned since because this video was from a while ago. Actually, how long ago was this video? Oh my God, it was a year ago. Okay, I'm willing to forgive you then because you didn't know who I was back then. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. That is the most fucking narcissistic thing I've heard all day. I'm joking. Do what you want with your skincare. And honestly, I will never know if this is pure satire or if that was your actual routine. Who knows? But I will say that was a lot of fun. And honestly, it was an honor having ContraPoints on my channel. And I hope if anything, I'm able to share her content to you guys so that hopefully you can find a new favorite YouTuber as well. What do you guys think of this routine? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts as always. Natalie, feel free to message me at any time. I will hook you up with a whole skincare routine. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.